Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be wrapping up the Object 279 series, and we're going to be doing a diorama including that little truck and these little figures. It'll wrap everything up and kind of bring an end to this whole series that we've been doing the last while. So, to get started with that, we are going to build the diorama out of this big piece of insulating foam that I just got from the hardware store. As you can see, I've already marked it out and gotten everything kind of where I want it. So, jumping right into the build, we're actually going to just start off by cutting a little bit of a slope into the side of the diorama. Now, this can be done with a hot knife, or since I don't have one, I'm just using an X-Acto blade and just kind of doing it. And then I'm taking those cutoffs from the slope there and just building a little mountain in the back. And sloping the front and giving a mountain in the back really just helps get the diorama a little bit more dynamic. And here, I'm just cutting out some graph paper, and I'm using this just to kind of see how big of a fence I want in the background. Because I'm going to build a fence, just kind of like a chain link one, to just show and have in the back to kind of stop the diorama. So, for that fence, I'm just using this kind of strainer piece thing that I found at the grocery store. It was pretty cheap, and it had a lot of this metal. So, I just traced out the design after figuring out how big I wanted it with that graph paper, and then I just cut it out with some scissors. I used some older doll ones here, just because the stuff cuts pretty easy, but you don't want to doll out some nice scissors. So, with those cut out, we're then going to actually move on to doing all of the clay work and getting the kind of foundation of this kit done. So with that, I just put this normal air drying clay, I just got this from a local craft store, and I covered the model or the diorama foam piece in some just white PVA glue, and then pressed down all of the clay all over it. Doing that over the entire surface of the model, including this top slope here, and you can see just this process of going through, putting the PVA glue on, and then sticking the white clay on top. Now, this turned out pretty good. Now, a lot of the areas on the kit I kind of scratched up or destroyed just to kind of give the clay and glue a little bit more area to hold on to. And that really helped. Then, before that clay is dry, because it takes a good while to dry, I put some saran wrap over it and then started imprinting the tank as well as some other things, which you'll see in a bit here, just onto the clay. And this really helped by just kind of getting that groundwork done, even though we're going to be covering this with mud textures and not as much of it will be visible, it really helps get those thicker, bigger ruts in where you want them and in set right. It also helps that you don't have to build up as much of a layer of your other diorama and weathering effects, and it helps you save on those a little bit. So you can see here as well, just taking a spare tire I have and going through it, just kind of making ruts, making this look like this is a road that's really been run through and driven on a lot. And then after that clay is dry, I'm going to go back and do the same thing I did on the foam itself. Just kind of marking out where I want everything, where those figures are going to go, where that crashed old M20, MA20 is going to go, and just kind of getting everything good. Now, that's a really nice process. It really helps you visualize things and help things out. And even though it will be covered up again with this mud texture that we're putting on, it just kind of helps visualize things. And then as well on the road, really helping you kind of figure out where the stuff is going to go. So you can see here, I'm just using the same AK diorama and ground texture that I've used to weather the other two models that are going on this diorama. Now, I really like using these same things, and this stuff has turned out really well for me. I've not built any dioramas before, this is the first one I'm doing with mud and all this, so this stuff really turned out well, it was really easy to use. I know some people paint over it in the end, but I decided not to. Now, once it's set up just a little bit, I push the tank on top of it. Now, I know some people do this with saran wrap or cover it somehow, but since the tank is already covered in mud, I didn't really see a need to. Then, taking the MA-20 and just kind of pushing it on there, setting it in its spot, 
really getting it good and seated in there. And then I'll come back with a brush again, and once again just using some old, kind of destroyed, cheap paint brushes to just kind of get through and push all that mud in. This stuff will really destroy paint brushes, so don't use any good brushes or new ones, and just kind of do that with older, cheap brushes that you can kind of destroy or are pretty much worthless anyway. So. Because I wanted this MA-20 to look like it was really crashed and has been abandoned for a little while, I just really dug up and pushed in a lot of mud all around it, making it look really like it's kind of sunken in there and been pushed into the mud. Then, just taking the figures and pushing them in, giving them little imprints to where they'll be. I ended up pulling them off afterwards so I could do a little bit more work on them, but other than that, pretty much all. Then on the top of this hill here, because it won't be really driven on as much or destroyed, I put some of this AK snow texture for dioramas. This stuff was a lot different from the other stuff. It was much more of almost a acrylic clay that went on, and I thought it went out pretty good. And it really just kind of gives a good basic snow texture. Then, just to add some little visual interest to the model and the diorama, I decided to just kind of throw these little tufts of static grass on here, just super gluing them in, and then to really blend them in, I just covered them with even more of those mud effects that I used before. And it really adds just a little bit of visual interest and something different than just a muddy slope on the front of this diorama. And I think they helped a fair bit. And then we'll be moving on now to finishing up that fence we started earlier on. Now, I had originally started this and I was going to put it on, but then I realized that it would be better to do it kind of after most of the major diorama textures and stuff were already on. So, you can see here, I just cut up some old dowels, and I believe these were from an old train or like railroad kit, and they were supposed to be something for that, but they worked nice as good fence poles, and well, the snow diorama texture was still soft. I just kind of pressed that fence material in, getting it all situated and set up nice. And then to glue it on, I just used some more white PVA glue, just kind of filling it into the crack and the slot in the side of the fence post, and then fitting it right up in there into the side of the fence bars and kind of the fence area itself. And doing this all kind of well, it's still a little soft and easy to work with. And then we're going to move on to the final major detail of this diorama. And that is this nice little 3D printed lamp post here. Wouldn't be something I'm building without some 3D printed details. So I decided to throw on this nice little lamp post. I printed in gray. And just to add to even more to it, I threw on this tiny little LED I got. It's also the first kit I've ever done or anything I've ever built with LEDs on it, and I think it turned out really cool. This is just a little flickering orangish LED that I got, and it was pretty cool. So I just kind of glued it on to the top of the fence post. I know it doesn't look completely perfect, but it gets the point across, and it's just kind of a small part of the model that you're not going to look at, but it'll add a fair bit. Here, I'm just kind of cutting out a little hole here for the battery pack and the switch for that little LED light to go. It's right underneath of where that center lamp post slash fence pole will go. So just kind of cut it out here. I had a fair bit of a tough time cutting it out, but using knives, I got it in there. So then I just used some double-sided tape to just kind of go in there and really fit it up pushing it in. Of course I made sure, as usual, test fitting it, making sure it would all fit. Then I just kind of double sided taped it, and after that I double sided taped the switch in as well, just fitting it up. Now the switch and the uh, coin holder, the coin battery holder, were all in one circuit here, so it was really easy. Just kind of wrapping it up and fitting in really nice there, so it just kind of fits up. All good. And I did go back and put some double-sided tape on the back of that coin holder just to hold it nice and good. 
then we're going to have to actually solder up and connect the two ends of this kind of electrical circuit here. So the coin and the LED itself. So I just put some heat shrink wire on there and then I just soldered, put a, only a little bit of solder, just enough to hold them together and make sure there's a good connection. And then after doing that, I just ran the soldering iron over the heat shrink tubing. Now, you can use a heat gun to shrink this, but I found it's a lot quicker and better for the model if you use a soldering gun, because it doesn't risk melting that foam or melting any pieces of the model. You're just applying some very specialized heat. Now, just to kind of finish up some things, I'm going to take some, I don't even remember which uh, washing or weathering fluid I had here, but it was just kind of a dark orange brown one and coloring up, as well as taking some of those rust effects that I love using on kits and spreading them all over this fence and all over that kind of area, making it look like it's not just some fresh fence, but it's been weathered up and kind of destroyed. And then where there are some problem areas and some little bubbles that form from the rust effect, I just took an airbrush and just kind of sprayed over it all. Then I'm just going back and filling in some areas that may have been missed or chipped off and show through to the lighter colors underneath. And after that, I'm pretty much done with all the major weathering. I'm just going through here using some of that winter streaking grime I used on the other models here and just to kind of unify and help coat everything, make things look good. And then finally, we're going to add this clear coat here to the kit, to the model. And this will really help seal everything and make sure nothing gets damaged. But also a big factor is this is a high gloss clear coat. So it will really make that mud look like it's fresh and still kind of sticky gooey mud rather than old dried mud, which is what this stuff dries to a consistency of. And then we're just going to take the figurines and glue them to the kit just using some normal super glue and gluing them into those little footholes that we made before when the mud and textures were still drying in on the kit. And then just to kind of blend them in and make them look like they're just less of perfectly clean figures in a very muddy diorama, I just put some streaking grime as well as I spread some of the little pieces of mud onto their feet. So I just went with a brush, kind of covered their lower bodies and lower legs with some of this grime, and then doing the same as I always do with this stuff, just covering it and kind of blending it in. And with that, it's basically all for this kit, and this whole model, and this whole series. I think it turned out really nice and really cool. And it was a pretty big undertaking, it's almost too big to fit on my modeling bench right now, but I really like how it came out, and I think the LEDs came out really cool, as you can see here. This really flickering LED really adds to the whole thing, makes it look really cool. So, if you liked the video, remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more, and check out my Instagram if you want to see kind of future updates and projects. So. Enjoy the rest of the photo montage of this kit and see you in the next one.